Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Indiana Jones Sands of Adventure was a board game that I saw. I saw the Indiana Jones, and it wasn't, there's was like three of these released at the same time. The other ones aren't really games, they're more like activities or parties, Just nonsense. This is an actual board game. But when I saw it, I was like, ah, oh, man, did they go for that novelty? Did they go for that toy factor over the game? Happily, I'm here to report that there's actually still a pretty good real-time kind of dexterity game attached to the Indiana Jones theme. You would have characters from three of the movies, although your main characters will be from the first movie, and I think that really works. Each character can have a unique power. You got these little miniatures that you really don't need, but that little contraption about how you're putting the gems in it and eventually flip over to get to the second part of the game. That does make it a little harder to teach in the mass market atmosphere. Us gamers will have no problem with it. My kids didn't have any problem with it. And it's a game we actually had fun with. As you go through the different levels, there's, there's like three levels you'll play through or stories, if you will. Uh, the board will change a little bit. And you have different options, which keeps everything fresh. It does have an Indiana Jones feel to it. Everything looks fantastic, and it comes together in a very fun package. This is probably going to be the best Indiana Jones game ever released. It's not saying a lot because there hasn't been a whole lot of these games released that have been anything of note, especially the two other games that were released around the same time. But... I think this game is a pretty solid family weight board game that has the Indiana Jones theme attached to it, and its theme and the IP do work together just fine. I think that this is going to bring, if you're a fan of the movies or the older ones, I think this is really going to be fine appealing. There's not a whole lot from the two new movies in this game other than Indiana Jones himself, but I still find the game very interesting. I do like the real time. I think it works in this game. The first half of it's not real time. The second half is... I do like the little contraption you're adding stuff to because you never know exactly when you're going to get. So the first part of the game is all about getting set up. And the second part of the game, it's going as quickly as you can. We have found the game to be rather easy. I don't think we've lost the game yet. We do to play, tend to play board games quickly anyway. The more AP, obviously real time, it's going to be a detriment to you. Some of you may not be familiar with the rules. Hey, what do I do here? What, what exactly? I forgot about this rule. you got to know them before the real time part starts. And right when we start getting close, I'll stop the game, make sure everybody knew the rules, and then continue on. And that worked out pretty good. So for me, Sands of Adventure, Indiana Jones has been a hit. One that we really enjoyed and one we are definitely keeping as the best Indiana Jones game on the market. Although, if you squint your eyes, Adventures by Fantasy Fight Games is probably the best non-Indiana Jones game themed. Here is Indiana Jones Sands of Adventure by Funko Games, two to four players, ages eight and plus. So this is a really cool cover, I think. I really think it sells the game fairly well. Open it up, you're gonna get a instruction manual, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. This is what will be popped out with all the little different tiles and stuff. Get a little place to put the action cards. This is really nice cardboard. You're gonna get these really nice little gems that will be in here, these look fantastic. A little round marker. These are not indented, although it looks like they are. Then you'll have this sand timer that you'll build. I'll show you that in just a second. And this will be the timer. So you have to put that together each time, but at least this is put together for you. You're going to get a bunch of, a little bit of an insert here. It's one of those cheap cardboard ones, but I think it works well. You're going to have the different bad guys, your tiles. <clears throat> Let me show you these. So these will have the reference guides on them. So every player can have one of these. You're going to have three different villains. You'll play through each game. So you'll see all three villains each game. Then you'll have a number of tiles that have some really cool artwork and actions on them. So you have to have A. You can always flip them over to B to have a different type of game and different kind of adventure or experience if you want to. Then you're going to get a bunch of cards. These are kind of cheap. I think you're going to want uh, to probably sleeve these if you're going to play this a whole lot. So you don't mark up the cards. They just have like symbols on them and some characters on them, etc. Then you're going to get miniatures that will be in the different characters that you'll be playing as. And these are fairly nice. You'll probably want to paint these up. I think the colors of them work fairly well. They're pretty detailed for the price of the game. Then you're going to get some tiles that look pretty good. You're going to have some dice that are customized here. Everything has that Indiana Jones look and I think it works well for it. Then you're going to have your little guy that you'll have here, and you'll be able to put these in, these in. You'll set this up here, and then you're ready to play. So this is what it will do, and it's kind of hard to see from a top up, but as it gets, it'll flip over, and the sand timer will go, etc. Very nice little component. 
Here is the instruction manual. As you can see, you're going to have a picture of all the components over here, which is a great, great touch. The game setup and how to play as you're going through. And then you're going to have the object, how to play. Plenty of pictures and examples down here in the black text, as you can see. Fairly easy. The dice will be explained. The different cards that you have will be explained very well. Playing cards, damaging the villains. It's a little disorganized. It's okay as you go through the timed phase. I was able to figure this out without any problems, and then you can win the game on the back. And this is not a reference because you have the IDs that come with it. It's a fairly good rule book. I was able to pick up the rules in under 15 minutes. I was up and playing. Newer gamers, I wonder how well they'll do with this, but I think it works just fine. To set up the game, you're going to have the timer here, your power tokens there. You can have your upgrade deck, which will be all the ones with this little stripe on it, which will be a little different. You'll shuffle that up, and you'll place those right there. You can have your tiles laid out. They'll have round one on them, and you can use the A side or the B side. You're going to have three villains. It'll say round one, two, or three. You'll start out with your first guy and put your damage on him. You have everything else nearby. You'll then choose a character. Each character will have a different power on it if you're using less. It has the player reference on the opposite side. You'll take your character and you'll take the bat take the bad guy, put him on any area that you want to, and you're ready to start the game. The game is fairly easy to play. So there's gonna be two phases of the game. In the first phase, you're gonna take your character and you're gonna put him on a location and activate that location. On pre next turns you'll be able to move him to any location except for the location where the bad guy is and you'll be able to do that. But keep in mind that each of the characters have a different power. So Indy says you may move to the space with a villain, but usually that's not allowed. She can draw six cards instead of four. He starts out with one of the power tokens, which I'll get to in a minute, and he only rolls one threat dice each turn. So each one does something a little bit different. But what you're to do one of the things, it says gain a power token, which will be one of these, and these will allow you to interrupt on somebody else's turn, ignore a snake, or play any card. You don't have to play the little Uno game that's going on. Draw an upgrade card, which will come from these deck. This is just more powerful cards. This allows you to draw two action cards, and you may play a card. So you're gonna have these action cards that you're gonna have. You're gonna have a number of these in your hand to start the game. This would allow you to draw two from the deck and then play one down. So you can play a card down. This says draw an action card, you can draw one from here, and an upgrade card, which will come from here, or draw any number of upgrade cards. If you draw two with the same color, you must bury them all. So I could take like this card and I could just take it, or I can keep drawing. Oh, I draw two blues, they're going to go on the bottom of the deck, and that's how that one would work right there. After you do what the action says, you'll draw, you'll roll the number of dice. Some of these have none, one, or two, and you'll do whatever the dice says. So if I went there, I would roll one. If it has a small gem, you use a small one. If it has a big gem, you would use a big one. And if it has an X, you would do nothing. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting gems into the sand timer, and performing actions. And what you're trying to do is get cards in your hand and try to do damage to the bad guy. The way you play cards is by going here, you'll be able to play a card down. When the next person plays a card down, it has to match either the symbol that's on the card or the color. In this case, it's yellow and yellow, so I could play that. Just like Uno, if I wanted to change the color, this has a hat on it. The next player or somebody who's playing a card could play a hat changing the color to red. But let's say that character didn't do that and it was still yellow. What you can do is you can play a card with a person on it. And if it's of the same color, then I would be able to do this and that would be like attacking the bad guy. So in this case, I would do one damage to the bad guy. And I'm trying to get the bad guy all the way through here. Now, once again, the bad guy is gonna activate whenever the X is rolled on the die. So when the X is rolled, each bad guy will have a different little power on here and you would activate that to do so. So what you're trying to do is be able to attack him as many times as possible. Now, as the game progresses, you're gonna be adding gems here and this thing will eventually become top heavy and flip over. When this flips over, you would then enter the second part of the game, which is the timed phase. And you only have the sand timer to beat the villain in or you would lose the game if you're to the third villain. If you're not to the third villain, then you would just add additional gems, etc. So one of the keys is the snake card. So during the second phase, if you draw a snake card, then you have to roll this dice as quickly as possible until you get a torch. Once you get a torch, then you can start playing the game again, and snakes are discarded over there. The difference between the timed phase and other phases, I can play as many cards as I want. 
So here I got a yellow card. Maybe I can't do anything else. And then the next person would go. Let's say the next person's able to play cards and they're playing cards down, trying to, that was the same symbol. Then there's a green one. They want to get, it's green and red. I can then play this attack card and he would take another damage. Once you're done playing cards or you don't want to play more cards, you draw a card and that signifies this next person's turn. If the timer runs out then and you're on the third villain, you would lose the game. Otherwise, you want to try to defeat all the villains before the game ends. Who should buy this game? If you are a fan of Indiana Jones or you know somebody who's a fan of Indiana Jones, get them this game. I think they're really, really going to enjoy it. Keep in mind, this is a family weight board game, so don't get too excited. This is going to be squarely in mass market-esque, although it's not a roll and move, nothing like that. It has some neat mechanics about moving around. You can't go where the bad guy's at. Everybody has a power, and you'll be able to utilize those spots on the board. Then you have the dexterity that, that triggers into the real time. I think it all comes together in a really, really fun package. Indiana Jones fans, play this game. Keeper for us.